On today's show, the 2023 NBA trade deadline is approaching on Thursday afternoon. There were some fireworks on Wednesday night. Nothing huge from the Hawks, but we'll have our final update in advance of the deadline. I'm joined by Robbie Callen of Uprock Sports and Dime, and we talk about all things deadline coming up. You are Locked On Hawks, your daily Atlanta Hawks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 1408 of the Locked On Hawks podcast. I am your host, Brad Roland. It is Wednesday evening. I don't know, 11 p.m. Eastern time or so, and today's show is going to be diving in to the deadline, a little bit of a bonus episode, and I am joined, as I sometimes am, by my friend Robbie Callum of Dime and Uprock Sports. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, I, I I feel like we're finally starting to get things percolating on the uh, on the deadline. It was, it was it's tough out there in slop world, man. Like, we were, <laughs> we were we've been in the dumps. Like, I... How many more John Collins uh, non-reports can we get out between now and 3 p.m.? I think three more. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and look, uh, when we're recording this, the a couple of trades happen tonight. One of them, I, won't, I mean, they obviously don't really involve the Hawks. One of them kind of does in that there was a lot of reporting and at least somewhat buzz about the Jazz. And most of that uh, intel around the Jazz focused on Collins in exchange for some combination of Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt, both of whom are heading to Los Angeles. So that's now off the table. That's one <laughs> thing that's uh, not 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 in the mix for the Hawks. I should say at the top of the show, we're gonna just kind of wrap on this on this episode. Not, not be, gonna be kind of kind of a free kind of free flowing, but I will say, not a ton of reporting out there that's news. It's last time I talked to Andrew Kelly earlier this week, and that was a full deadline show as well. That's still very applicable across the board. The only couple of things that I at least I have not talked about out loud. Um, our mutual friend, you and I, uh, Jake Fisher, reported on his call-in show today that the Lakers have at least touched base on Bogdan Vodanovic. Now, that's an interesting one. Uh, I think it would kind of have to be some combination of like Patrick Beverly plus. Mm. I don't know if the Hawks want to do that. Um, I don't know what the Lakers would be will, willing to offer in addition to Beverly. So that's that's kind of out there. And uh, our also another mutual friend of ours, Matt Moore of the Action Network, reported over this week that the Cavs – Contacted the Hawks about Bogdanovich. Um, no, no specifics there from Matt, but like probably some combination of like Karis LeVert or yeah. Kevin Love or whatever you want to say there. So uh, again, we're kind of low on specifics. You talked about that on the Hawks side. I sent this clip, uh, this screenshot to you earlier today. Uh, Woj, Woj talked on TV for like 10 seconds about John Collins this afternoon, and it got thrown in the ESPN um deadline tracker and it was basically the hawks don't have a deal for john collins <laughs> it was the uh a total non-update from Woj. It's, it's not his fault and it's just it's, it, we're, nothing has changed as again as of 11 p.m tonight That's the funniest point. part about it is like it was on like the tracker and they did like an exact time stamp 12 so 12 17 p.m, 17 PM yeah. eastern nothing's happening we're in the mix it's great um, it's great it's what that's what we needed we needed the john collins non-update um, yeah, and look, John, John's available. We all, we all kind of know this. Uh, yeah. You know, Tony Jones said, um, who covers the Jazz, it was, it was about the Jazz, but he reported that the Hawks are looking for a player that's going to put them in a different tier in the East. Um, I think Jake said the same thing earlier this week. Like, the Hawks are not going to try to trade Collins for just the sake of trading him has been the kind of reporting, and that's what Woj has been saying as well. I don't know what that means. I've admitted on the show, even this week, that this new front office, I have uh, much less of a feel for. I just, I don't know where this is going to go. Um, Landry Fields gave an interview today that I'm sure you did not read, Robbie, to no. the AJC. No. And it was essentially um, the most GM speak interview imaginable. And Love this that. is not anybody's, I mean, it's not Lauren, Lauren Williams did the interview for the AJC. She did a good job with it. There was nothing you could do. Like Landry's never going to say anything there. Um, you have to ask the questions. You got to print his answers. It's just one of those things. But uh, he didn't say anything re revelatory whatsoever. So here we are, Robbie. Uh, the deadline is going to approach, I don't know, we're like 16 hours or so right now as we're recording this podcast. No fresh intel. Um, I wonder what the vibes are like over there other than just like stuff is happening. You know, Cam Reddish got, just got traded moments ago. That's that's the thing that you happened sure for did. Josh Hart. So uh, the, Hawks the fans Knicks rejoice. The Knicks just committed to sending first round picks for and with cam reddish uh, yeah that's kind of a unfortunate bit of arbitrage for the knicks they traded a, a protective first rounder but still a first rounder to the hawks for cam famously and now they had to attach one to get josh hart 
Um, you know, Josh Hart's a good player and a former Hawks target at one point. But uh, yeah, there you go. Cam's, Cam's, Cam's <laughs> moving. Hawks. He was. He was in the rumors at one point. Uh, as he's, I think he's been tied to like every team in the league. Now he's reunited with, with his college teammate, Jalen Brunson. So that'd he be, is. That'd be fun. Jalen Brunson was fired up. He was. Um, I don't know even where to go with this. I mean, I guess we'll start with John. I know yeah. you are you're covering this stuff more nationally, but like Collins has been out there. I know the Athletic had they're doing like a big years. board of their guy, of their guys. We're talking about he's in the top five still, but it's really been honestly cooler than I thought. Um, there have mm-hmm. been less specifics, if nothing else. Like there's been little things every couple days about a team that's interested or whatever. And I wonder what you think about like in general how. I don't want to say tepid, but like it's it, there's not even been like a rumor in my mind. Like we haven't even reached the rumor part with John Collins. Like he's out there, obviously, but mm-hmm. there's not even been like a, a real fake trade for him. It's kind of weird. No, I so I think it's it's part of this current trade market climate that we're in right now, which is for the last month and a half since you know we really got into trade season. There's been this big gulf between. Um, what the teams that are selling or, or looking to move off guys are, are asking for um, and what teams are willing to give. And, and I think we're, we've been kind of waiting for this reset off of this summer where every, every big name that got moved got moved for three, three first rounders plus. You know, you look at DeJounte was three in a swap. Donovan was three in two swaps. Rudy was four in a swap. Like... <laughs> Like it, it really, it really kind of put the market in a weird place to where nobody wanted to move anybody early and not get enough back, but nobody wanted, none of these teams want to keep giving up multiple firsts or even a first for a guy like Collins who isn't performing to the contract. That's not to say John can't be, you know, value on that deal. Like when he signed it, we all thought, okay, like, like that's pretty fair for him. Um, it's just in the role that he's had to had to be moved into with this roster, he's not performing to it, and so nobody wants to pay for a guy um, at that the, who's making that much money, who's not, you know, putting up stats that that would, you know, if if you're a fan base and you see a guy coming in making twenty five million dollars a year, and then you go look at what John has produced this year, a front office is going to have a hard time selling moving a first and a quality player for that, right? Like it's just not really going to happen. And so we had to get to this place where the Hawks asking price comes down. Some of these other names get moved. um, And now we can start maybe getting something happening. I think it it was always going to take to the deadline, especially since John's been available for two and a half years, right? (laughs) Yeah. Like this, this is not new. Like there's no, Nobody feels like, okay, if we don't get him now, we're never going to get him, right? Like there, there's not a scarcity when it comes to John Collins' availability. If you don't get him at the deadline, he's going to be there this summer. Um, and then he's another half year off of that deal. Uh, and so I think with John in particular, it was always going to take until some moves got got made and maybe some teams got desperate for us to get to the real rumor real uh potential fake trades potential real trades ever happening um and we may still never get there because i don't know if those teams like you said the jazz making the move that takes one of the teams off the market um some of the longtime teams that were connected the spurs were connected to john for years they're not going to be buyers no so it's it's one of those things where you start whittling away at the teams that you know Portland just made the Josh Hart move that was another team that has always kind of been in the you know maybe they could go after John uh you know they they were always in the mix as 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 a team that got thrown out there a lot I don't know how real a lot of that was but you keep whittling away teams that that have been thought thought of as potential John Collins trade targets and you start getting it starts getting thin um unless a team like okc decides to be a buyer which i wrote about uh tonight for dime i would love to see that because i think okc is a team that is uniquely positioned in this market that i talked about where first round picks are being overvalued in terms of what teams want they've got a million of them they can move off of they can move off of first and some guys and kind of try to sell the Hawks on here. We'll give you a first for John Collins. You're probably not going to get the caliber guy you necessarily want. And I don't know if the Hawks would be willing to sell on that. 
Um, but they could move a first, you know, they've got 24 to 26. They have 10 first round picks in three years. Like you can't do anything with that. Like at some point you got, you might as well take a swing. And and you've noted to me in Slack and I'll let you talk about it here. John would be a great power forward fit next to Chet Holmgren. Like that's the ideal center for John Collins, right? Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know, success 2023 is all dependent on the team members that you actually help you to align yourself with. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs is a fantastic option for you to hire. And really, they have qualified candidates that are really more efficiently found by matching open roles, people that actually have the skills, values, and experience to help you achieve your goals this year. I've used them a few times in the past to hire. It's always painless and easy and fantastic from start to finish. They help you to attract qualified candidates to your open job with targeting tools and help you make it very easy to screen the applicants that you actually do have based on your qualifications all in one platform. They go beyond the resume data at LinkedIn Jobs by using insights from your job post your company, and there are millions of profiles from members to put your post in front of the most people possible and also the most qualified people possible while doing it quickly and doing it for free. They're rated number one in delivering quality hires against leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the most qualified candidates you want to talk to, and they help you to do it faster. Post your job for free. Yes, for free at linkedin.com slash MBA. One more time, that is linkedin.com slash MBA. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, and this year, the only app that you need at the party for the Super Bowl is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We are very excited to have FanDuel as the number one sportsbook par- partner for the Locked On Podcast Network. They are fantastic, and we are hoping you would join us in following along with FanDuel this year. If you're new to the party with FanDuel, that's even better as well. They have tons of great features that can actually make sports betting both fun and easy. Download FanDuel right now, and you can be on the Super Bowl this coming weekend with a no-sweat first bet. Get to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win at FanDuel. They have all kinds of betting options. They have, that, of course, includes money lines and point spreads and totals and a ton and I mean a ton of player props for the big game this weekend. This projects is really an awesome Super Bowl matchup as well. The Eagles and the Chiefs are number one seeds in their respective conferences. Tons of star power, a closely projected game, and uh, all the attention being paid in the sports world on Sunday evening. And the app at FanDuel is it's fantastic, number one. It's safe, secure, and it's easy to use. And best of all, you get your, your winnings paid out instantly at FanDuel. Join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on the Super Bowl. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. There's a there's a list of teams that he's been tied to, at least by some sort of reporting, like the Pelicans and the Jazz have been on there and, you know, other teams and the Nets in previous iterations. Right. Like, there's a list of those teams. And then there's a list of teams that, like, I think would make sense and I kind of think should call the Hawks. That includes OKC, who you just talked about, and, like, Indiana would be the mm-hmm. two that I'd always kind of flag, in part just because of who the centers are. Like, I think Chet long-term would be a great fit with John, like you just said. Uh, John is the role man. Chet is like the do everything else, can shoot it, space guy. Same with Miles Turner. Not quite the same as Chet, but a similar skill set. Like, and that's just someone who, like, if, they, if the Hawks move John, I'm going to hope he does well. I mean, it's just, it's just what it is. I hope, hope uh, you know, obviously the Hawks under Travis Schlenk did a lot of favors and, like, were certainly open to making guys get to where they wanted to go on some level. I don't know if that's going to be the case this, this time around with any move. And you said it earlier about Collins, but. We're at the point now where if they move him, I think it's going to be a first round pick with some like flotsam salary mm-hmm. or it'll be for a player. And like mm-hmm. it seems like in the reporting recently, the last week or two, it's been more like the Hawks want to get a player yep. more than a pick. Yeah, I think Amick Amick had that. Yeah, days and I, ago. you know, and that kind of drives with what I thought, because look. The reason why John, number one, is still on the roster is that the Hawks have been asking for this very specific thing where they don't want to get worse. And it's like, okay, I get I get that, but it's it's very, very hard to make a trade yeah. at a at a position where yes, you have Jalen Johnson, who's been playing well recently, but you know, as recently as a couple of weeks or months ago, they were not certainly not ready to hand the job to him full time, which means you have to replace him. And that's why the Jay Crowder stuff's popped up or whatever. And it's just like you're they they painted this very narrow picture with what they want back from John. Maybe it's, maybe that's changed. This is a new front office, and that's why I will freely admit I don't know what they're looking for as mm-hmm. much. But yeah, I I don't know. It's this weird situation where like I won't be surprised if he's traded, but I, I think my like percentage level of him being dealt now is about as low as it's been yeah. since since the season started, or even like it's not that I think it's not gonna happen for sure, but like there was a point 
over the summer. And then there was a point earlier this season when I was like, all right, it's going to be like an 80% chance John's going to get traded. And now it's like, it's sub 50. Like I, I, if I had to guess, and again, mm-hmm. it's kind of an educated guess. I'm not full on reporting anything <laughs> here, but it's uh, one of those things. Like, honestly, the tenor that I've got, made, I, made, I made a few calls today. I'm not, I'm doing a little bit of Woj reporting here. Um, I, I kind of think that it's more likely that, that they, that they trade bogey than Collins. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a hot take or not, but that's the feeling I'm getting and talking to people like agents and people yeah. around the league. Like it seems like Bogey's got a little bit more juice on the rumor market right now than Collins does. Well, I think that makes sense in terms of what you think most contenders are looking for, which everybody's always looking for shooting. Like whatever you know. I mean, that's that's what everybody wants, and you know, I think John, kind of like we talked about, you, you kind of need a, a fairly specific situation to feel like he's going to thrive, right? Like he, he is not a guy that necessarily plugs into any raw, as we've seen with this roster in Atlanta that yeah. plugs into any roster and you know, he's going to perform at the level you want from a guy making 25 a year. And that's the problem he's running into and the Hawks are running into on the market. Bogey on the other hand is a guy that I think teams, whether, you know, however he's playing. Um, and obviously he's since coming back from the injuries starting to kind of find the groove a little bit um i think it's easier to talk yourself into him as a plug and play kind of wherever and that just opens up the market to where you can have so many different teams talking about it yeah and it's it's really comes down to one one guy has a i think bogey's reputation in the league is higher than his current level of play which is not a bad, and that's that's someone who's watching every minute of the season of the Hawks, which most most people are not doing, and that's the reality. Like, and I, also Bogey is extremely, like you said, plug and play, in that every team, without fail, looks for wings who can shoot and handle yeah. and create a little bit. And Bogey's not a great creator, but he can do a little bit of that with the ball in his hands. He's tough. He's got a great reputation as like a guy. Not that John, mm-hmm. not that John does it because John does too. But Bogey's got you know he just he'll be a competitor. He's got a good playoff rate. All that, all that stuff. And he makes less money. And the Hawks, candidly, it's easier for the Hawks to replace – if they want to win, and the Hawks do, they're not in the the mode to take a step back that I've heard anyway. It's easier for the Hawks to replace Bogey's minutes than it is is for John's minutes, which is kind of – I I know maybe some Hawks fans think that Jalen's like ready for it, and I get that. But with the jump from A.J. Griffin – Yep. And just the fact, just the reality of the situation on this roster, it's a little bit easier for them, in my mind, to operate without Bogey than it is to operate without Collins And st- while they're trying to win now. And then there are more nuclear options. Like, maybe maybe they start getting crazy and they start talking about Capella trades or whatever. Like, I haven't got that intel at this point. But, uh, you know, it's real it's real quiet. But I do think that Bogey, just it'd be easier to move him in some ways because the number is lower. And also just like, it seems like there's just more buzz about him right now because like if you the Lakers in there, like I'm not sure that he's gonna be their top target and I'm not sure how, how excited I'd be about Patrick Beverly coming back. Yeah. But if you, if you can get like Austin Reeves in the deal or something like that. Okay. Like something like that. I don't know, an arbitrage move. There's not, there's still not a move that I've seen that I'm like, okay, that's the one for either right. one of these guys, but there's still time. Like we're still, as we're recording this, there's still again, 15 plus hours left. And um, as everybody kind of realizes normally Thursday midday is when like the real stuff gets happening. Like most of the yeah. time, there's actually been more deals tonight than I kind of thought they were going to be, <laughs> to be honest. Well, yeah, I think, I think the league needed it to get oh, yeah. things moving. Like they, they needed somebody to kind of unclog this thing. And, um, well, and the Kyrie thing was such an outlier. Like it was such a weird deal. Right, that, it happened that so that quickly. Have, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't going to be the deal that like, got things going because no. it was such a weird transaction from from trade requests slash demand <laughs> to him being dealt on a Sunday afternoon to like a very small subset of teams and his bag all that stuff like happened right. and it was a one it's a kind of a one off trade. But now I mean I will say I mean you got Toronto is the team everybody's looking at of course. Yep. Brooklyn's not done. Like they're clearly looking still like there yeah, are teams the Kess- that are trying the to Kessler win. Trade was like clearing a little more room in a roster yeah, spot. Yeah, da- and... Dallas, I think, is not done looking. Um, yeah. Miami, Miami made their Deadman dump trade to make some flexibility as a team. And Miami's always doing something. Like, they're always kind of in the mix, too. So, Well, Miami's 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 in every rumor. Always. And, until um, – and then they don't. Like, they're, they they operate – like, Riley <laughs> operates in, like, the old, like – the old – now Ainge is making moves all the time. Trader Danny's Trader back. Trader Danny, but, like, he's back. Uh, it, it, Riley operates in that Ainge realm of like five years ago, 
where every time a name hits the market, it's like, oh, Miami was in on them, but they just kind of cooled off or whatever on talks. And it's like, okay, guys, like, unless, like, the part of the problem for Miami, and this is a weird tangent that we're going on on the Hawks <laughs> podcast, but it's in the division, it makes sense. It's a bonus podcast. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, like who, who did he trade? Like, if they're not trading Hero, they're definitely not trading Butler yeah. or Bam. Well, I mean, they, they love like, to trade Duncan Robinson. Want? They want they want they want they want to trade Duncan Robinson. And they, they, can't would, do they, it. Would, they would pay somebody. Well, that's the thing Duncan about like there's there's always guys in the market. You know, Russ is the he just got traded finally, but Russ is one of those guys. Like there's there's teams. He's the primary example, but like Ben Simmons is one of these guys now. Where like these teams would love to trade them, and uh, they just there's nothing out there for some of these guys. And uh, I will say at least Collins has never gotten to that level. I think the yes. Hawks have been eager to trade him at times, but not. Sure in a way where they're going to just give him away. They're not going no. to give him away. Still, well, that's, which is, I don't think. which is part of the problem. Like, which, well, is, right. why that's, which is why we're on year three. That's why we're this. still doing this. I mean, why and look, and that's why they gave the him way, a contract in free well, agency. And it's, I was talking to somebody about this offline this week, but it was always the great irony with Collins who, you know, has, is a great developmental story. He's gotten a lot better at a lot of different things, but he was, you know, number one, he was Travis Schlenk's first draft pick, mm-hmm. but he was also the only guy Travis ever drafted that was not a dribble pass shoot guy. Like oh, Travis yeah. is of course like big into the dribble pass. That was his, that was his mantra forever. And Collins, especially as a college player was like, not bad at all. Like he was a very traditional around the rim player role guy. Yeah. R- role guy, especially you know, rebound and all that stuff. And he really, he really wasn't a dribble guy at all. He still kind of isn't that much, that much of that and really not a passer at all in college. And it's like, it's so weird that he's, but it, we sort of put that cap on maybe that's part of why he was available for all this time is like he, he he didn't ever fit perfectly into the schlank box and that's why i don't really know with landry and a different uh front office structure like what they're even looking for because they still have a hole there if they trade him for a non-power forward so i don't know it's going to be Interesting, and then you throw in the. I know, I know you're following this very closely. The Justin Holiday for second, Justin Holiday plus oh, second baby. round pick uh, options are out there as well, which oh, will cover with Andrew. That was like yeah. I was I going to do that to you on this podcast. That's a very. Uh, we're, it's, we're, we're, it's a deep cut, man. I'm gonna be honest. We're, we're, we're talking, we're, I don't, we're think, talking about, I don't uh, think I don't think that gets a blog on. Yeah, time. Monday, Monday I'm night, hundred percent honest. Monday night into Tuesday, we're talking about Justin Holiday for uh, Matisse Tybel or for Con Corkmaz. So we were Ooh, deep oh, into hey, that. Hey, um, Corkmaz, Corkmaz trade requests. That's what he people is. Crave. He's out. He's out there. He's avail- um, he is available again. So yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, we'll see a lot more deals in the league. You know, tonight was sort of the first real dominoes falling. Um, but you know, part of the issue as well, I talked about this a little bit with Andrew, but I want to know what you think before we get out of here. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, there aren't that many sellers and that's holding things oh, up yeah. too. Like there's more, I guess maybe no more now, but even the deals that have happened in the last few hours today, they're not like pure selling moves. Like Portland train, Josh Hart's kind of a selling move, but they got uh, a player back. They got a pick back. It wasn't like a trip. It was, they're well, like and that down. also doesn't like take them out of no anything. they're still it, it there James it was a so, it was a soft sell yeah it was I one mean, of those things where it's like they avoid Josh leaving in free agency for nothing they get a first for him they weren't going to re-sign him yeah that's basically uh, more, of that, more of that like that's almost like an indication more of like they're going to sign Jeremy Grant than anything right. else like, and it was couldn't do both yeah the only team that sold so far is Utah like and Utah was then, a straight that was a sell that's a sell for sure but number one they were not supposed to be good no but like it 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 finally took one team out of that like, yeah that, that was the first that. team it was like, and it was they, the they first did the team to bow one. out it was yeah. the first team to bow out of that that you know cluster in the west right um it would and, be really funny if they still like somehow finish like ahead of the made, lakers made, like made, that's not gonna happen no, it, it'd be I mean, really it, funny it would be very funny and i'm sure they'll be i'm sure russ will be bought out in the next two days or whatever but um no there is a lack of sellers. Like the, the bat, there's only a handful. As someone who does power rankings every week, there's only a handful of really bad teams, and everybody else is at least kind of trying. And none of the um, bad teams have no a lot I mean, of guys. Houston's that like the only you. team that has guys to sell. It's, it's that Eric Gordon, KJ Martin, yeah. and they don't, and they never want to do can it. We, can He's, we free Eric Gordon? That's what I'm saying. Eric Gordon's still there, and um, somebody think about. I mean, Orlando's Eric, really Eric, Go- Eric Gordon for John Collins. Call it in. Oh Lord! I mean, that was. I'm sure Andrew Kelly, shots to Andrew, would love that trade. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, there's guys on every team. Like Orlando, 
there was a stray Celtics Mo Bamba rumor today. I'm sure that I'm sure you saw. Yeah, yeah um, what? That was an odd uh, one. First off, how was that they're looking at Jakob Pertl and Mo Bamba? Like, that's not the same level of guy. No, it's not. But what I think are it's just like doing? naming centers, basically. Um, naming available <laughs> just centers. Name, just name um, some guys. He's and, seven you know, feet. He could go to Boston. And maybe the big domino really is Toronto. And once that settles or doesn't, yeah, I mean, that does well, it. and then we're also we're also back in this world where we're all kind of held up on KD just a little bit. Everybody wants to make sure they don't want to unload guys if KD still may be available. Like we're back in this place we were at the start I, of free agency. I can't believe that they're going to deal him before 3 p.m. tomorrow, they're, but maybe I mean, they not, will. They're not going to do it, but it still holds up maybe some of those bigger some business. Deals. Like, is, sure. like, okay, how about this? Is anybody gonna, is <laughs> any, is anybody going to go like trade the farm for Pascal Siakam? If KD is potentially available, you're not going to do it. No, so that's what. Well, so that's and honestly so bringing back big Toronto trade that that can't happen at this point. Like Siakam's not going anywhere. No, he's not going to trade. Yeah, and that's been the reporting. Anywhere. I heard Jake talk about that too. Um, you know, Siakam's the guy they're not even talking about for the most part. It's, sure, it's all OG and Fred, and that that makes those, those are real and guys. Gary, and Gary Trent and Gary Trent for sure. Um, Who falls into the bogey like every team thing. thinks they could get a shooter. Yeah, and he's yeah. a fine player. He's very useful. But even going back to the, to the Phoenix point to bring it back to the, to the Hawks a little bit, Phoenix has always been kind of out there for John Collins. They've mm-hmm. kind of been out there for Bogey at times because, like, if they could turn Jay Crowder into Bogey, they probably would do that um, in some respects. And now they have a new owner who presumably is more willing to spend than Robert Sarver was. Maybe that's part of this too. But they're not going to – they're the they're number, they're number one team on the list that is not going to do anything about K, non-KD until KD is not available because they – every report – as soon as it was like Haynes, everybody was like mm-hmm. immediately like, Woj said it. Phoenix was the first team they listened. <laughs> see, Haynes, Haynes tweeted it like before Kyrie to Dallas was done. He tweeted it when the trade request happened. It was like, it was like, like, it was like a, the, the record. Phoenix's record. Phoenix is certainly uh, raring to go when it comes to <laughs> like, having pursuits. They um, are ready and willing. James, James, James Jones texts Chris Haynes live from Damian Lillard's living room. Well, kind of like the list of teams tonight that was Russell, the Russell Westbrook buyout destinations. They're just like, we're suddenly three teams reported within like 30 minutes. Like, by the, way, the Bulls by are way, interested you, in Russell Westbrook. By, like, for by what? Way, the, the Bulls? Why? Uh, can you imagine a worse? No, that's a fit terrible for idea. Russell Westbrook? Like, Russell, Russ is a tough fit anywhere. And, and I, I will say this now. I'm not saying it's going to be a lot of Hawks fans. I will, will get people asking me about Russ as a buyout guy if he is bought out. And obviously, I can't say 0% chance. I don't know why the Hawks would do that. I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I don't know why he would come to Atlanta. He wouldn't play very much. Um, so I'll just say all that now. John Wall, same thing, because these guys are these guys are famous. If John Wall gets, gets bought out, yep. someone will ask him about John Wall, and I get it. But, like, there's a reason Russ is available. Like, it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, can you imagine him with DeMar DeRozan? No. If you thought the LeBron fit was bad. Can I, mean, I interest you in LeBron who can't shoot threes? I mean, DeMar's, DeMar's a great player. I, no, I've, but, DeMar, I've, but that's the thing. DeMar's great, but he works from an even an even tighter, smaller radius. No, I mean, I, and, I've, I, and I've made LeBron. fun of the DeMar being a guard on the all-star ballot thing for two straight for two straight years. DeMar DeRozan is not a guard in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but you throw in, you throw in like you know, Kobe White and uh, whoever else is going to be, you know, Zach Levine, of course, just like how many people are going to be on the, I don't know. That's a bizarre situation. If they were to sign it, I think he might go to the Clippers and I hit that I think too. It's Clippers. So he doesn't have to, then you don't have to move. That's just, easy. he just gets to stay home. Uh, but not long and short. This is, this is probably the last show that I do before the deadline. Uh, unless something crazy happens. I, I don't think that the Hawks are a lock to do something. I still would expect when you, when you throw in the percentage chance that Collins gets traded, mm. the, the chance that Bogey gets traded, the chance that Justin Holiday gets traded for something, I think the Hawks like are probably even money or better to do something between now and three o'clock tomorrow. What's, but what's the um, what are the odds of the the Anton Jameson Memorial Cash Considerations deal? Well, not to uh, ruin everything that I have for tomorrow, but the Hawks the Hawks do have a little tiny bit of room under the tax, but if they hit every incentive for Murray and Capella, they'd be over, which is not going to happen, but they're going to be, and I know people are tired of me. They're not going over the tax. I just would be stunned. So if they need to, if they feel like they have to create a little bit more space, they could do that. And maybe it's just like they take on a little bit less in the holiday deal or whatever. Considerations. Like 
it'd be cool if they had more space to take on some money because that way it just frees you up to do other stuff. Sure. Uh, but they don't, they just don't have it. I mean, even if you did a small, like a, a minimum for minimum deal with big crazy or whatever, you're taking on some money and like, it doesn't really mm. do you any good to do that. So like even today, like the reddish deal, you and I were trying to figure out what the matching salary was in the, in the reddish heart deal and ends up being Svee Mikhailuk and uh, Ryan Archidiakono just to make the money work. And the Hawks just have all these minimum guys. It's like so hard. Like they have yeah. five guys in the minimum. And it, yeah. those guys are not really helpful in making trade money work. Yeah. Big day for Villanova players getting moved. Arch gets moved. Uh, Amari Spellman made a, had a video that made, made the rounds this week from South Korea. Shouts to Amari Spellman. Still, still, still Hawk playing legend. Basketball. Hawk Hawks legend. legend. First round pick. Um, anyway. Yeah. That's all I have, Robbie. I appreciate you doing this. Um, we got, episode we got late night. 28 minutes out of this. We, we, could, we could talk for another hour. It's, it is what it is. But uh, long story short, folks, I think the Hawks will probably, if I had to guess one way or the other, do something. One but move. honestly, it, wouldn't, it. it would not stun me if it didn't. It's that, it's, and, and, and nothing fans hate more, as you well know, than oh, teams not doing anything at all. Nothing at the deadline. Dude, I covered so many Hawks trade deadlines. It did nothing. Yeah. From the media room. Like I said, that's that's why I asked about the Anton Jameson move. That was every year we got like one one tiny little thing. One dude coming in, and it was always, you know, a favor to somebody. To, well, with Travis, know, with, and in the recent I know you haven't been covering the beat for a while, but with Travis, Travis was big on the I'm gonna do a guy a favor mm-hmm. buyout or yep. small trade. Yep. And I don't I assume that this, there's some of that DNA still in the front office. And they talked about being pre- player friendly. These are two former players in Landry and Kyle Corver, who you know well. Oh, God. I would imagine I those guys that. are like pretty open to that, but again, the money is so tight that it's they may so not be tight. able to do it's it. It's hard to do. Yep. So we'll see. All right, Robbie, plug yourself before we get out of here. You got you're, you're working. We're writing stuff, and yeah, man. Say, well, up, you're you're writing stuff mostly. Dime Mag, Uprock Sports. You know where to find us. Um, We're there. The tweet, the tweets at our account when when Twitter is functioning. It's kind of working right now. I think. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna get a. Not sure if we're gonna get a punt cast Super Bowl props. Pod oh, up or not? We're gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get the fellas in. Chip, uh, what's going on? Chip. I got, it's 11:20. I mean, they are. They were texting about Tulsa basketball earlier. So, I mean, Chip um, is Chip is a dedicated Lockdown Hawks listener. So, Chip, if you're listening to this podcast, let's get it going, please. Yeah, um, I got. I got a text about Tulsa not covering 27 and a half earlier. So, sure, sure, you did. Uh, four touchdowns. Come on, guys. It sounds like a Wednesday in the uh, podcast. The podcast group chat. So, you know, we got all that going on, but you know. It's deadline day, baby. We're we're ready for hopefully something. Uh, I've been doing my best to to do the reverse jinx on Twitter. Um, tw- twice gonna so happen. far, stuff's tw- gonna happen twice on so Thursday. Far. I mean, I, I ready. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Non hawk, non hawks division stuff's gonna happen tomorrow. I, I don't know what it's gonna be, but the, there'll be there'll be plenty of action tomorrow. I think I'll be up bright and early, and by bright and early, I mean like ten a.m. Ten. That's really for you ish. Yeah. Some of us have day jobs and I have to be up at whatever time I have to be up in the morning. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's sign this podcast off. Robbie, thank you for being here, my friend. Uh, please follow Robbie across pocket platforms of all kinds. Podcasts, wow. dime, all those things. Uh, I wrote power rankings this morning. I don't even re- I don't remember what I wrote. It was Clippers. Like, it was at 5 a.m. I wrote it with the Clippers. It was Clippers. It's great it stuff. There. High quality uh, content. And I'll be on again tomorrow. The Hawks, by the way, have a home game just four hours post deadline. They play the Suns tomorrow night. Without, without Devin Booker, so a favorable matchup for Atlanta. We'll come back after that game as well. With uh, you know, the plan is tentatively, if the Hawks make a trade, I will probably do a quick podcast before the game, and then if they don't do a trade, I will do a wrap up after the game. So stay tuned for all that. Subscribe to the podcast. We'll see everybody next time.